Our next question is from Brianna from Florida. Hey, Brianna, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, just wanted to real quick say you guys are awesome. I listen to you guys every morning. So thank, thank you, you for putting out a bunch of content. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so my question is, I mean, there's a backstory to it, but basically my question is, is it better to lay off um, heavier weights while focusing on mobility and technique or keep driving home technique while doing my heavy lifts um, and just continue to prime beforehand because I'm basically powerlifting right now. Yeah, so. good question. No, that's a good question. If you want to improve and you want to improve smoothly and seamlessly, then you're going to back off on the weight. And here's why. The second you push intensity, which is what heavyweight does, your body will always revert to its its recruitment pattern that it's you know been doing for a long time. So let's say, for example, I'm training a client that uh, for whatever reason, I'm going to make up a scenario, they, they, they wear high heels all the time. So they walk in high heels all the time. And so they've developed a recruitment pattern where their body gets really good at, at walking in high heels. And then I put them in flat shoes, but I tell them to run as fast as they can. What will end up happening is their body will revert to the high heel recruitment pattern because that's the one that it knows the most. So what happens when you go heavy is you're going to continue to solidify poor recruitment patterns. And it's going to be hard or if not impossible to change those recruitment patterns, even if you add a lot of mobility work. So ideally what you would do is you'd go back off on the weight, back off on the intensity, focus on mobility. Focus on skill and technique. Don't push the intensity because it automatically throws your technique back to what you're used to doing. Do that for a while until the problems are solved, until the new recruitment pattern wow. is solidified. Then go back yeah. to lifting heavy. I I a hundred percent agree. Who's that? Who's that? They got a question. Sorry. <laughs> Did you snap at your mom? No. <laughs> I a hundred percent agree with Sal. I I do believe though you can still go heavy you just gotta you 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 gotta train with like this mindset so let's say you know what happens a lot of times someone's following a program if they're following like a maps program they see on the program that this set i'm supposed to do six to eight reps and you load the bar up with a weight that you think you do that now what ends up happening let's say at rep four it's getting kind of heavy and hard but you definitely can get six to eight and you push through and you get your 68 but on reps five and six you kind of shimmy a little bit or the form isn't perfect and breaks down. If you're focused on the, the mobility aspect and correcting imbalances and that's where our focus is, I'm, I'm stopping the set at four. So, you know, even okay. though, even though I can get five, so it still allows you to go kind of heavy and challenge yeah, yourself, your intensity's low. but I'm not worried about the rep range that my programming yes. is or what I, I'm, I care so much about form that the minute I feel that it's going to break down, I'm stopping the rep yeah. right there. Well, I'm going to add to that in terms of like going less reps, but also like stopping right before you know you you, you, you see that sort of discrepancy. Have you you lean into that and you, you make it an isometric exercise? And so now I'm like st I'm slowly like really addressing it and, and honing in on it and trying to to actively uh, recruit more muscle fibers to to provide support. And so. Um, but again, you'll be able to find that, um, you know, with, with less weight and, it, and your body's going to be able to be trained a lot more efficiently that way to, uh, to be able to kind of get past that one discrepancy. Yeah, whatever you train, you get stronger at. So you strengthen what you train. And if you train a, a poor recruitment pattern, then that's what's going right. to become strong for you. So in order to change that... You got to back off and work with a different and train a new recruitment pattern. And that takes a little bit of time. But here's the good news. Once you do it, you'll surpass what you did before. If you don't do it, it's going to be very hard, if not impossible, to get out of the, the place that you're in now. I also, I, I, I'm reading your question now too. I, I see it up on the screen right now. And you say your, your hip dips a little bit when you come out of the squat. Yeah. So um, I usually feel it, like I, like I said in my question, um, there's... It's, I can only feel it when I go very, very heavy. And it's not until after I start feeling, um, like my, just the left side of that, um, erector spinet yeah. and I can feel it. Like if I go in for another set, it feels like I pushed something too hard or that there is like a discrepancy there. So I've dialed back for the past, like two to three months. Um, and they, my squats feel a lot better. Um, but I guess my question was, uh, should I continue to 
maintain strength by, you know, pushing the heavy weight, but not going past that, like that point of where everything starts breaking down. Yeah, no, I yeah. would, I would definitely not go past or hit your max at all. You don't, you don't want to be dealing with, if you're constantly uh, feeling that shift while you're also trying to correct it, you're just, you're, you're going to, you're going to be stuck in a loop the whole time. Do but, you have maps prime yeah. pro? Yeah, that's where I'm going with this. Um, I don't. Okay. We're going to send that to you because that's the program that you should focus on. And I would do mobility movements for hips, ankles, and feet several times a day. Spend about five to 10 minutes, several times every single day working on those movements. And then when you work out, drop the intensity and it's all about uh, technique and form. Have you ever, have you ever filmed your feet when you squat? Like I, <laughs> I actually film myself quite a lot and I just filmed my squat um the other day I have a slight um uh what is it a pronation when I um totally I'm up yeah it's like so slight but that's what's um, that's what's causing the that just so you know that's what's causing the the hip shift too yeah and and if you're that's what's 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 happening is that this the side that's 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 pronating opening up mm -hmm. you're you're shifting on the opposite high opposite side so and that's and then that's also why you're feeling it on on one side of your your erectors yeah i and and because you're strong and you're lifting heavy weight i see here that you're aiming for a thousand pound uh total wow um yeah that's the goal which is tremendous right the the slightest discrepancy between right and left it doesn't make that big of a difference when you're lifting a hundred pounds you start lifting 200 300 pounds now it makes a big difference mm -hmm. so and i mean honestly i could literally put a if i put a quarter of an inch rise in in somebody who's strong in one of their shoes they will develop some serious problems within a very short period of time you give that to somebody's not lifting very heavy they might not notice for a long time so because you're pushing your body because you're really strong this is very important yeah that makes sense all right well thanks for calling in all right, thank you guys. No problem. That's pretty damn strong. Yeah, it's really yeah. strong. It's uh, it's pretty impressive. But yeah, you know, I, this is an example I've used before. I'll, I'll say it again, just for the audience if they have never heard this. But let's say you've you've always only ever typed with your two index fingers. You know, the hunt and peck, uh, you know, uh, method of typing, and you've done that for years. You're pretty fast with your two index fingers. If I go and then try to get you to type properly using all of your fingers. You're going to be slower at the better method at first. So if somebody came to you and said, type as fast as you can, you would have to revert to your old method because that's your recruitment pattern. That's what you're best at. The new method, there's a learning curve before it surpasses uh, the old method. So it's the same thing with recruitment patterns it with takes exercise. A, a whole lot of reps too. So yes. you have to be very patient with this new approach. Uh, and, and so that's just something you're, you're going to have to reconcile with that. It's going to take a while. Now the positive though, is that you're also going to see benefits though, besides just that, like the speed of it, you're also going to see your body still changing because you're still progressing. Everybody thinks progressing always has to be me putting more weight on the bar. Right. If you're working on mobility, getting a greater, greater range of motion you have better stability and control the body will show results so you could technically still lean out or add muscle and look better and feel better mm -hmm. and show progression there even though you may see a dramatic reduction oh, in your squat a better squat with lighter weight is going to give you better results than a heavier More squat muscle that's not as good so that's just the, the bottom line